Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys are doing amazing. My name is Amdat Ayoko Fishala. I am back here to share the word with you guys. And I'm very excited, always excited to come up here. Um, so how have you guys been? Happy, happy, good Friday. Um, did you take the time to rest today or celebrate the event today? God is really amazing. What Jesus Christ did on that cross means a lot. And I feel like we can never really understand the love of Christ until until the very day we actually meet him and like we're able to experience it in full because we can't really understand it you know even when we see him I don't think we can ever understand just how much he loves us and just how much love he is and how much love he has and so we have a lot to talk about today and I'm very excited about today's um teaching so we're going to pray Heavenly Father I thank you Lord for bringing us here today thank you Father for your sacrifice on that cross thank you Father for how much you take care of us and continue to reassure us of your love and I thank you for protecting us and for protecting us up until the point that we're here and as you continue to do so may your name be highly exalted in Jesus name Father we worship you we lay down our everything that we have everything that we we treasure we lay down down on the altar oh God and we say Lord we love you and we say that you're Lord over our lives. And that's why we're here today to glean from your word and to, <clears throat> and to worship you. For your word really is the substance that cleanses us. And so we're here for you to cleanse us, O oh God. We worship you, God, as our Lord and our Savior. You're Lord of our lives. You're our King. And Father, I pray that as we come, we've come here to glean from your word, I pray that you'll, you will shine your light upon our lives, O oh Lord, today in Jesus' name. And replenish us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And I pray that whoever is out there that is wanting a word from you, perhaps they're going through some situation and you just want that word, I pray that you will Bring that Rema word to them, oh God, through this message today in the name of the Lord Jesus. And I pray that as I teach, I allow you to teach through me. I surrender everything unto you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Abba, I thank you. I glorify your name and I block every distractions from my end and from the audience's end in Jesus' name. Father, I allow, I allow the Holy Spirit to flow through this teaching today, oh God. Thank you, Father, for the amount of miracles and, and just the glory that will shine through this teaching, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I pray that I pray that the right person, the right persons will see this message and will heal their souls in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys. Welcome, welcome back. Um, the last time I came up here, I talked about um uh, how God wants us to basically repent and I feel like just the, um talking about last week's sermon just had me thinking about like you know be very much introspective to myself and just to like what could I be possibly doing right and what could I be doing wrong um and I started just to think about like you know um yeah my walk with the Lord um and I feel like it's very important that we are always introspective because like if you read the book of Jeremiah which is something that I had the time to actually just you know kind of go out well read but I'm not done with it but I plan to be done with it you know very soon um just to read the book of Jeremiah and I just like the way that Jeremiah actually like you know speaks to the people um through you know um well, how the Lord speaks through him and also also how he actually speaks to the people. Um, yeah, um, the last time I came up here, we talked about formal, right? Um, and I feel like when I was listening to the message again, I feel like if you didn't really understand what, um, you know, what we're talking about, right? Or like what we are in Christ Jesus or like what we're doing, it's very easy for you to actually like misunderstand a lot of things. Um, Again, like I feel like I wasn't quite um orderly in terms of like how I actually, um, you know, um, peached or articulated my um points um, because of the fact that I wasn't the one actually like making up those um things in my head. It was just like coming as it comes, right? Um, but again, I specifically said something about formal, exactly about how we have different terminologies as we in the body of Christ, we, and I mean that we, we in the, in the 
where everyone is in the body of Christ, but like I mean, believers, you know, in the body of Christ, right? Um, how we have different terminologies from like the people of the world. Um, so I know like certain things are not really a parity, but like we have we tend to prioritize them, and that's really where we, you know, kind of fall short. And I said something about like the things that we do on this earth really doesn't really matter, but I mean in the terms of like worldly gains like is it important for you to have a car in your lifetime is it important for you to like marry in your lifetime is it important for you to build that house in your lifetime if it doesn't really add up to where you're going to if it doesn't really help you get to heaven then like why would you want the extra weight like it's important for you to be light in your work with Christ and so that is really what I mean when I say like it's not really important you know what you do in terms of like worldly achievement you know, if you're actually moving in speed for the things of the Lord, right? Um, so uh, today was really amazing for me because I had the time to go to um, the Mont Royal mountain, um, mountain Mont Royal, basically like mountain royal, royal mountain in English. Um, it was very, very um, nice. I didn't really, I feel like going to different places, like in to fellowship with the Lord, um, is always a different experience. And I just feel like it's always a different experience for me. I feel like maybe the time that I went was like a bit like, you know, I don't know. But I had the time to actually rest this morning and I rested to like, you know, uh 12 midi, like um noon. Um so and I feel like I, I should have gone early in the morning, but I was thinking about the walk because I had to walk, I had to walk like forty one minutes from my place to like the mountain up to up to the mountain. Right? It was. I mean, I went there, you know, around like one ish, and it was nice. There were a lot of people. I had the time to pray and just like praise the Lord a little. Um, but I wish that I'd gone earlier. But I just feel like. For me, basically, like, I just feel like there's just been a lot of things that's been going on, even reading the book of Jeremiah. And I talked about even about being introspective in this time. Um, I just feel like there's just a lot of distractions, even like your 905 can be a lot of distractions. And I also do things on the side as well. That I feel like, you know, I could actually like schedule my, my um, organize my schedule properly to actually accommodate extra time with the Lord um yeah I just feel like even on Sunday like you still go to church and then you still come back and then you're still like just outputting and not like really focusing on the inputs really although like I, I studied the word a lot I studied the word of God a lot and I feel like I'm talking very fast <laughs> um but there was nothing like really just like sitting in the presence of the Lord like for that extra time or going the extra mile to actually seek him and I feel like just because of like lack of like time management or like you know organization um skill on my end like it's just really taken out of like that you know that time and just to, doing that um teaching was it yesterday or day before yesterday just and studying Jeremiah I was pretty the beginning of Jeremiah like just had me be very introspective because sometimes you think you just really think and that was really what Jeremiah was saying like some like these people really think that they are pretty decent like the thing that they are you know without any blemish like the thing that they are perfect but the fact is that because of their overconfidence like th that is really what has brought them low that is really that, that that is really what blocks them from repentance so no matter where you are in life like there is something that you, you can't improve and I feel like that is really immediately knowing that like you're human and like you know yeah like we are we are growing and I feel like that is what we're going to be talking about today and I'm really excited about today's teaching and I'm going to be talking um pretty fast because I'm actually passionate about this topic and um and I hope that you follow along um so I've been meditating on the word of the Lord and especially like because I've been studying second Samuel reading um, and going through the journey and story of David and really um, just trying to hear what the Lord has to say in the season like it's really important because I know that every time I flip the, through the Bible anywhere I am is where God wants me to be um, and so really God I'm, I'm really at second Samuel and you know 
it's really just interesting. Like I have a lot of things to say, but um, in terms of like our walk in Christ Jesus, um, you know, think about the story of David. David was this man that loved the Lord. Remember David fought Goliath. He was very, very like loved by the Lord, favored by him. Um, came into the courts or in the uh, or palace of Saul and ended up being like, you know, promoted to be, you know, the one that would, you know, uh, he, he was promoted to his, um, was it his Amobiara? And then like, eventually, like it was the one that would play the music instrument for to abase the, you know, um, his spirits that manifested in, you know, in Saul. Um, but we see how God continues to favor him, right? Um, and then we see how he was actually anointed to be the king. Um, Saul knows the, you know, ends up like, you know, pursuing David to kill him. But many different times where it was almost like a seed was going to kill him and like it never happened. Like there was even one time that David could have killed Saul. But he said two times he was going to kill. It was almost like he could have, but he didn't. Like, you know, and he, he said he, he could not, he has no um certification, basically certification. He has no authority or audacity to actually go to kill the Lord's anointed. Um, and yeah, even though Saul was going to kill him, like this man was really like going to kill him. Saul was his enemy, but because of Saul had an imprint on his head of being the Lord's anointed, he could not touch him, you know? Um, and then like, we know the story of David, right? Um, he, you know, Saul is Saul, right? He ends up like doing something funny, like he's, off of the, you know, the the pedestal of grace, ends up making a bad decision, right? I mean, you got to, you know, how he um, was dealing with the war in his, um, between him, between Israel and um, the Philistine, the Philistine nation, right? And ends up like consulting um, Samuel, Samuel had died then, and Samuel already did tell him that, you know, he wasn't going to be king anymore, um, but he didn't really want to accept that fact, right? He didn't really want to um, accept the fact that God had favored or God had, you know, um, put someone ahead of him, right? He didn't want to surrender to the Lord, and, and that's really another thing that God really had to point out to me even today while I was actually, you know, meditating and just you know, talking to him today. Surrender is really a thing, right? It doesn't really matter if it's like, you know, looking like as if it's a negative for you. Um, Just know that you are supposed to be in a place where you actually give everything to the Lord um, and let him do the organization. Let him pick who would be on top, who would be on the bottom. Wherever you are at, that's where the Lord wants you to be. And you have to be accepting of that. You know, I, however, God, however way the Lord wants to use your work, you know, let him use it that way. Let him use it. And that's it. If God says that, you know, um, you're going to get this many traction, you're going to get this less traction, let that be what it is. The right people will see your work. The right people will be inspired by what you do, you know. And, um, you know, a lot of people that will, you know, watch my teachings might not really understand me because of, you know, how fast I talk. Maybe, like, I'm, like, super, like, um, uh, you know, neurotic, you know, in a way, you know. So you might not really get it. Maybe they're not up to that standard yet, you know. And there, but whereas there are people that actually do come every week, that appreciate like you know the way I actually teach the the word of the Lord and like they get inspired they go home every week with something new to actually you know explore in the Bible that will actually improve or, or um, facilitate their growth in Christ Jesus so yeah and that's what Paul did um, Saul did not want to accept that his time was over right so right well we'll see that he basically like he went to um you know he sees that the lord basically wasn't uh, talking to him like and then he went to he went to a medium you know with the story and consult someone someone basically was pretty pissed right and basically told him again like you know hey like your time is done and now because of what you, you've done now this is what's gonna happen to you right like and then we see how you know he ends up like dying right they end up dying. He, he actually committed suicide, right, on, on the battlefront. 
Um, and then he told um, the one of the, um, I believe it was an Egyptian, the man, the man was a, an, Egypt, an Egyptian slave to, um, I believe, to the Philistine. Um, and he told him to basically like kill him, right? Like finish him because he was still alive when he did put the um, pierce, um, used the sword to pierce himself. He was still alive. And then he told the guy, finish me off, right? And the guy basically did it. And then I think he, he did it cut off his head. It might have cut off his head, like, and then went to David, right? And tell David that, hey, this is what happened. Like, you know, I did da-da-da-da-da. And David was like, right, like you actually like did what you did. Like you killed the Lord's anointed and you came up here to even tell me. And because of that, you use your own mouth to, you know, um, to expose yourself. And now you're going to die because guess what? You're not supposed to, you know, um, kill the Lord's anointed, right? The Lord has exposed you, right? Guy ends up dying, you know, and then um, David ends up being um, uh, crowned or, you know, in um in judah right and he ends up crowning judah we see what was happening over or at jerusalem um, was it jerusalem or israel jerusalem right yeah the capital of israel um there was another you know um there was another governance there so it was like two different governance um the story is pretty deep um but yeah and then yeah, I should actually do the revision on that one. Um, but like end of the day, like David ends up being crowned as the king for um Judah and Jerusalem. So he was the king of Israel. After a lot of shenanigans, after a lot of things, uh, after a lot of things happened, and I feel like even that part of the story is even quite interesting because you'd see many different characters playing politics, you know. And I remember that uh, they had to stand down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, there was actually a civil war, right? There was a civil war. There was this very bloody man that really um, wanted to um, really fight. Like, actually came to fight um, Joab which, because it was, there was actually a civil war. Um, when to fight Joab, it was like it was very bloody, right? Um, and then... Uh, they had, um, during that war, one of Joab's brother, I think it was his younger brother, that was pursuing this man. I don't remember his name, but it was like one of the top captain of like Saul's army because he wanted to retain the crown um, in the house of Saul. And so that was why he was fighting, you know, um, Judah, right? F fighting the governance of um, David. And this younger brother of Joab was pursuing the man, right? And then... Um, he ends up if you know, if you know the guy's name, um, just put it in the comment below, or like I'm going to like just you know comment the, put it in the description, um, the guy's name. But uh, so it ends up like you know pursuing him, right? And then you know the guy turns and is like you know he told him like do not pursue me, like he doesn't want to kill him, like you know like I don't want to kill you, like you know what I mean. But the guy keeps pursuing him, like he was running after him. Um, end of story, like, he, he, um, the guy from the captain of Saul ends up, like, you know, basically killing the guy. Joab, you know, is pretty much upset about this situation now. And I feel like they, they actually did um, caught the guy. They caught the guy that killed Joab's um, brother, caught him and brought him to, um, did they bring him? They eventually came to the palace of um, of David somehow. Um, I believe he came by himself to discuss some type of like, you know, um, to discuss something. But also that event was also like, it was all like politics. And it was, I can't really remember the, in, the intricate details. Um, I need to do the revision on that one um, because the story was quite long. Um, but we see how David, David's positioning throughout all of this politics Um the man ends up like his position is quite interesting because like he seemed to be someone that you know was very much submissive to the Lord. He just wanted to please part in terms of like what was the Lord saying for him to do. Every time he was always asking of um asking God for what the next step was going to be, and that was basically how David like really um you know governed. Um, and we see how, you know, Joab ended up, you know, killing the guy, the guy that killed his younger brother. He killed him um, out of like, you know, vengeance here. Um, because David, actually, when the guy came to meet David in his, in, his, um, in Judah, 
you know, the, David actually told the guy to leave um, and, you know, everything was, everything was good. The whole like, meeting went well. And then this Joab guy went, you know, to pursue the guy and then like dealt to him. Right. And then David was so like, you know, pained by it. And then, you know, yeah, he, he actually didn't even, I think he didn't even eat, you know, when he heard the guy was dead, called Joab, you know, and cursed Joab and told him like, you know, um, his lineage will always have like leprosy, I think. Um, and uh, basically cursed him, you know. Um, yeah, and we still see Joab in the picture because um, we see how, um, and the part that I want to point today, even after summarizing everything, the part that was really, really important was the part where, you know, when this war was going on, when all of this war is happening, because you see how David, you actually stayed in the in the land of the Philistine when Saul was actually pursuing him. So, so David had built a he had built a rapport with you know external um you know parties like you know he had, had made affiliations with other nations. So like there were other nations that actually did know him. The Philistines actually did you know they had built a rapport with him, which is like it's quite interesting, right? Because the Philistines were like the core um enemies of the israelites right um so yeah david basically was fighting all this battle gaining ground the, the the mission was not to stand still and just rest in peace the mission was to take the land take the nations that the lord had blessed them with right um so that was what david was doing his whole reign was like about warring 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 taking and covering ground and taking spoils it was all victory upon victory for david um, Joab was in the forefront, even after the, um, David actually cursed him and his, you know, his lineage because of what he did, you know, pertaining, you know, the, um, the house of, uh, of Saul and um, basically killing the, cap the captain of Saul, death Saul, um, you know, Joab was still like the leading man there, leading the war. And, and, you know, whilst this thing was happening, you know, David decides like, you know what, I'm going to take a, t a time off here, right? I'm going to rest in a time of war. Do you understand? It's like, yeah, he went to the palace. And then, you know, we saw this woman that was actually like, she was actually taking a bath, right? She was naked, right? And then it's like, oh, look at this, you know, pretty woman. And he calls her and he basically sleeps with the woman and didn't really even, there wasn't much in, in, in information about like how she reacted, um, I know like in is in Israel, um, part of the law code of Moses, like if the woman is not singing, she's not screaming, like she missed, it means like this woman is into it. And so she's committing adultery and so she's got to die. And, you know, the fact is that, you know, David actually knows the law of Moses, like the law of Moses did exist. And like what David did was adultery. And, and I feel like it seemed like it was very much like glazed over, like, oh, well, um, Oh, the Lord wasn't pleased with him. It was what he said. But what he had done was actually commit adultery because David actually had his own, like he had his own, his own wives, right? The woman has her own husband, Uriah, the Ethites. And if you check the history of um the um connection of the children of Israel and the Etites, like you would see how the Etites were actually good people to those people. Like um, Abraham, when it was in the land of the of Canaan, um, when his wife Sarah died, the man um that actually gave him what well, we sold him is is part of his um, the land in his field was an Etite. This man was an Etite, and this man was actually willing to give him the land it was actually going to give him like the the sepulchre it was going to give him the sepulchre and because that was what um abraham requested for it was i think it was a, a piece of land that had the sepulchre in there it was actually going to gift it to him you know for him to bury his dead so the connection and the, the relation that you know the is the lineage of um david or abraham the the, the connection that he had with the etites was actually one that was actually quite good, you know? And I think that the fact that, um, you know, David would do what he did to Uriah, who was actually fighting a battle on his, that was on his own side. The man was fighting a battle for Israel to actually overcome. That just says a lot. And I feel like not just the fact that, and I feel like that really might have been what actually pained the Lord, but also the fact that David was actually committing, you know, um, Adultery was committing adultery, and that is absolutely preposterous. 
And you will see how the sin really is what is really lingering in, you know, our lives today. Um, we know about the, um, we talked about how, I believe it was in, in the last Genesis series about how John, it was in the book of John, how John had listed like when Jesus was at, um, uh, 30 years old and really the lineage of um, they, Jesus up to Adam. And he talked about how they were basically the sons of God. And so this lineage basically had a, their reputation had an imprint on uh, whatever lives that we would live, okay? So their their destinies was very much linked to, you know, our lives. Like, we're the ones that will inherit whatever they had done. They were the ones running the race. Like, they were the ones, it's like a team. It's like a family. It, they were a team that were actually running the race. And they were kind of like, you know, whatever happened is what we will carry on our heads, okay? Like, they were the ones that, you know, had Jesus, David came, Solomon, you know, did his own thing, and so on and so on. Joseph, right? Jesse, we talked about this before. Um, I'm trying to, I was actually going to bring out, pull out a scripture, um, here. Hmm. I don't even remember what scripture I'm on, I'm on to actually pull out anymore. <laughs> oh my gosh, my back. Okay. So that is pretty much like, you know, um, a bit of that. Um, I think I was going to, that was in, um, also that was in the, in the Genesis series, the sons of God. Um, these are the sons of God. If you've not watched it, I suggest that you do. Um, so now I think we're going to do um, Second Samuel. Yeah, yeah, that was what I was only to do. My gosh. Second Samuel chapter 11. We're going to do this. Yeah, King James Version. It says, and it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him in all of Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman washing herself and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after her, after the woman. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Heliam, the wife of Uriah, the Etites? And David sent messengers and took her and said, and she's, she came in unto him and he lived with her and she was purified from her uncleanliness for she was purified for, from her uncleanliness and she returned unto her, her house. She conceived, the woman conceived and sent and told David and said that, you know, I'm the child. But let's just go on to the point, you know, um, what the Lord actually said to him. Um, he said, uh, da, da. he says um when the morning was past david, david sent and fetched okay so we know about the story about you know the child and david you know the child did not leave um Bathsheba. um i believe the part was nathan nathan told david something that the lord had told him that part is very important <clears throat> so we're gonna look for that part that's going to be in chapter 12. That is really affecting. It's going to, it's really, you know, we're going to talk about that very soon. <laughs> yep. So yeah, it's basically um, 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 10. And but let's start from... Uh, let's start from verse 7. It says, and David... And Nathan said unto David, thou art the man. Okay. Um, if you go back, you see how the story goes on and on about the narration that narrate nar narrative that basically like the Lord spoke to Nathan, right? To tell David right, about basically the point that he's trying to pass across. And said so Nathan said to David, Thou art the man, thus uh, said the Lord God of Israel, I anointed the king of Israel, and I and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. If that had been, had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such thing. Do you understand? Like God is saying that 
if everything I've given to you, if that was little, like I would have given you more. Do you understand? That's the Lord that we serve. And it says, wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Like you, that is the commandment of the Lord. Like you can't commit adultery and you think that everything is going to be fine. Like, what did you expect? Thou hast killed Uriah, um, the Etite, with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And it says, now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah, the Etai, to be thy wife. You see, thou art what despised me. And so what's going to happen? What's going to happen? The sword shall never depart from thine house. And so many people are asking a lot of questions like, well, if, you know, if we've actually like, been saved and like everything's like you know in order then why is it that we're going through certain things that we're going through why is it like you know all these things are still happening right people are dying what believers are going through they're still seeing the effect of sin like there's spiritual warfare like that is very much apparent um like why is that we're constantly fighting like do you know what i mean um even then like even then in even then in in before this event actually did happen you will see how the battle was basically like external it was between the ammonites and like you know israel was between israel and the philistines it was never really like between the governance of David like before we see that Israel was actually divided into like Judah and Jerusalem where like you know um there was like the household of, of Saul that was like that of like David and it was like that you know civil war event happening but eventually it collided to become one and then we see that you know fusion happening and like it was very much like you know pretty much like done very well there was there was peace and civilization like people knew that david was king um and so what did happen after this and we can see that happening like in um the book of uh let me see here 11 where are we now 12 we'll see that happening in the book of um, 2 Samuel chapter 16, 17 of his son, we see, first of all, that his son, um, uh, the one that raped his sister, right? So give me one second here. So we see Absalom, basically. Absalom is wanting to take over the throne. Right? Absalom is wanting to take over the, over the throne of his father. But before that, we see an event happening where one of David's um, son went to rape his sister, his stepsister. Um, it was um, Ammon. Ammon went to basically rape his sister, uh, Tama, right? That was something that never would have happened in Israel, like, and especially like in the reign, like in, in the family of David, like that event really happened to um, propagate something greater. And we see how, you know, Absalom, like that was Absalom's sister, Tamar was Absalom's sister, where, you know, he, you know, obviously like planned everything perfectly, took them outside and dealt to him and, and, you know, killed Ammon, right? Killed Ammon and then fled to uh, Gusher, right? Um, Gesher. Uh, and then like, you know, David still was actually quite pissed about it. He actually mourned the death of Ammon, even after like, we know what Ammon did, he's still like, but everything wasn't okay. Even after that event, David like lost the son that he was supposed to have, well they had another one right but like it was never actually okay like when you see the consequence of sin continuing in that lineage that was supposed to birth Jesus Christ like you, I don't know if you, I don't know if you understand what that really like what David did why it was so disastrous um and basically like you know um Absalom for some reason you know in in Yoruba language you say almost she you know, um, he, Joab did 
you know, politics and basically introduces this woman that would, you know, pretend to be, you know, in agony or in like in, in, in some type of pain and the, the king would have pity on her and then she would tell this, you know, um, conjured story uh, that was very relatable to what this king was actually doing, whereas and the king will, you know, feel some type of emotional connection to what she's saying and then she'll kind of redirect that to saying that, well, that is you, kind of bringing out a moral in that story to say that, well, this is what you should do, basically, right? Um, and then that happened and David was like pretty much, you know, um, it was, there's a word for it, you know, he repented from what, for what he, he the, what he wanted to do concerning Absalom and um, Joab basically called Joab and told him like, you know, I know you're the one behind this, but like, you know, go ahead and bring um, Absalom from Geshur, and Abs which is what Absalom did. Absalom came back, right? He came back from Geshur, and um, the king did not see him. Like, I think it was like for about three years he didn't see him until and this guy was always coming to call um to tell Joab like Joab take me to see the king and the king is like no I don't want to see you right and then like you know um one day wakes up like took you know matches and like <laughs> and then goes to burn the field of Joab and Joab is like what the freak like who did this like do you know what I mean like I didn't do like what do you mean like and then he found out that he finds out that it's um Absalom that that went to burn his field and he went to meet him like what will you go ahead and burn my field for what and it's like well I've been telling you to go meet to take me to go meet the king I don't care what he's got to say but like I need to see him da, 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 da. and then you know at this point like David, um, abs Joab absolutely had to tell David what was going on. And then David was like, you know what, fine, bring him to me. Um, and then goes to see him. And then everything was pretty cool, I think. Um, and then like we see, fast forward to the point where like Absalom is like going to, is in front of the gates and the same people come in to the king, you know, to actually like resolve matters. And then he's like, well, and his heart desires, he wants to be someone that will actually bring justice for the people. And then he ends up executing on his evil desires, um, evil, evil thoughts, you know, evil imagination, um, the way he begins to actually do what he said he was going to do. So basically, like, taking over the, the place of the king to actually resolve matters. Um, and then people started to like him, right? And then he managed to, like, you know, um, you know, bring, uh, basically, like, steal the favors of like you know the people like or the the make that they he made them like him okay <laughs> and then like he basically like he told the king like you know he wants to go to Hebron right for because he told the Lord if the Lord can bring him from Geshur to Jerusalem again that he would go to Hebron to um do some type of sort of service to him um back and so David was like you know what fine go I'm fine with that and which is a lie um he basically, I think he took about 200 men with him when he was going to Hebron. Um, those ones didn't even know what was going to happen. Like, he just went with him very innocently um, to find out that this guy was actually going to set up his own, um, you know, governance in Hebron, which is exactly what the um what happened back then with the remember the household of Saul so it's like the same thing that was literally happening we know that was like a reverse so that was like God wanting to put things back in order so this was like a shift of, to actually open that wound again and we see that wound being opened like as if something is an something is unhealed in this lineage and which is something that is really affecting us as well um so we see how what happened, right? Like how Absalom really like was wanting to take over. He actually like approached like his with his army, approached, you know, Jerusalem. They were coming to Jerusalem to literally like, you know, take over the reign, the, the, the governor, take over the throne from David. Do you understand what I mean? Like this was a civil war from like a, a son to his father. And that's why I'm saying that like, this guy was a he, he, he was almost she. Um, your brother was almost like a, a a foolish child, a like this was a a like this this child is not a child. He's not <laughs> this is a, a monster and just yeah your evil child you know um yeah approaching one into but David had to leave David had to leave his throne he had to leave his own throne and like 
even told them like I'm going to this mountain or the mountain of Olivet, I think, um, and don't bring the ark of the Lord with me. I know the Lord is dealing with me now. So he knew that it was because of his sin. That was what why the Lord was actually making these things to happen to him at that moment. And so it was like, I know that the Lord is making this thing happen to me at this moment. And if the Lord really like will forgive me and everything, then I think that it will bring me back to meet with the ark of the Lord, bring me back into his presence is basically what he's saying. Um, we see how, you know, the story goes long on and on and on, but this was just the start of something that was literally like big. Okay. And this is literally the lineage that basically like Jesus Christ was birthed from. Was this ever really ashed? Like, but we need to understand that what Jesus Christ did on that cross, <clears throat> Bible talks about it in, in John, like that was done, but we're living through it in faith. So this was this was a curse. The curse, we see that in, we talked about this in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 10. Let's quickly go there. It says it's going to be continual. Like it's going to be an internal thing. It's going to be an internal thing. Um, it says, um, where is it again? Is it 12? I think it was 12, 10, yeah. Okay, so you see, it says, now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. The sword shall never depart from thine house. Who were the people that actually betrayed Jesus Christ? They were the people from his house. The people from, first of all, they didn't, um, people from his um, own country did not accept him to be a prophet, Jesus Christ. Um, second of all, um, people that were supposed to accept him, which were, um, you know, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the Jewish people, they did not accept him. They were the ones that actually threw stones at him, persecuted him. They were the ones that did evil against him to show you just how the curse was even penetrating, even affecting Jesus Christ. Because why? Because of it was from this lineage and we also from him, do you understand? And so we will also suffer the same consequence. Um. So, and, and this is really like, like we know that there were, there's always war happening in the world. Like there's always going to be war, you know, external wars, nations against nations. But we don't really talk about the one that is inside that is really happening as a result of a curse. Um. So, um, I was going to do John chapter three verse thirty six. Um. So you see this one, KJV version. This is John basically preaching and it said, "He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. If you believe in Him, you have everlasting life. And he that believeth not in the Son shall not see life, but wrath abideth in him." But there was a, there's another scripture that talks about how we live a life through faith. Just give me one second here. Let me bring it up. I've been in Romans, I think. Oh, Hebrews, Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. It says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, that's good. Yep, that's good. That is true. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it says, but without faith, is it, it's impossible to please him for either cometh to God must believe that he is, and is a reward of them that diligently please him. That is, okay, um, that's not the verse I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, I think it, it's, it's in the book of John, like how we live our lives in Christ Jesus in the book of John. Okay. Um, anyways, maybe I'm gonna look for the the scripture and put it down there somewhere. But we live our life, you know, in Christ Jesus. Like we know certain things are happening, things are happening, like there are curses, there are a lot of things happening. But the fact is that we actually live our lives through faith, you know. The fact is that these things will actually show up, like we will actually experience the impact of this curse. But the thing is that it's our faith. It's our faith that's supposed to be that blockage there. It's our faith that's supposed to be that, you know, um, obstruction to allow it to really affect us here. So our faith is really the one that is like going to help to, you know, take that thing away from, from, from that, from us to actually impact us. So yeah, like there are people that are going through generational curses, going through like, you know, for example, like this type of curse is actually, you know, very very much apparent you will see that happening in like maybe one 
phase of your life. Um, but if you don't have faith, it will impact you. And what is really faith? Faith is like living a life that God has said that you will live. It's like knowing the fact that that life is very much real. You're living in that life. You're not doubting that you're not living in that life. You are absolutely 100% sure that that is the life that God has called you into. And so whatever that's happening against you, it's no longer like... <clears throat> It's no longer an internal thing because you've managed to separate yourself from the plenty. Now it's like, it's no longer like, a, it's like your faith. That's why it's, some, it's, it's a faith. It's faith. It's you. So it's like basically you against like whatever, whoever or them, right? It's like, it's no longer like a battle between you and like your sibling or you and your, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, your faith, it's, it's a, it's a individual walk. Like that's what I'm trying to say. And that's why I say this a lot of times that, you know, many people want this walk in Christ Jesus to be some sort of collective thing. And we've seen many people fall into, you know, a prey of like, you know, cults or, you know, you know, they say they're going to church and they're not being like, you know, join, join a cult or like they join something that is not really like of the Lord um, or they join like some sort of like, you know, social group, okay, instead of actually worshiping the Lord because of you don't really get the idea that when you're walking your faith, you're walking your faith as an individual, you will get people. If you have people that will help to grow your faith, that is absolutely great. And it's good to, you know, have people that will actually like, you know, be there to help you. God can actually give them a word for you. God can minister through them, um, through them to you. There are many things that God can do through other people to get to you. But the fact is that, you know, you will get the word, but like, what are you going to do with the word? You're the one that's going to do something with the word. And so if you don't understand that it's you, that's actually going to be doing the word of the word that you're getting um then there's a problem because even though you have all of these people standing in front of you behind you on your side it will still get to you because guess what this curse is from inside this curse is from internal it's just, it's internal okay so you need to basically build that blocking that 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 blockage that stronghold there that will literally block everything else okay because it's sometimes the bloodline okay so yeah, like faith is really, really important. And um, I'm just, I've just been thinking about, you know, the life in Christ Jesus and really like it's, a, it, you need, we need to emphasize really like how much it's really a walk of faith. It's really a walk of faith. Okay. It's really a walk of faith, a walk of faith. Your faith can do amazing things. Faith is really important. Like it's a walk of faith. Faith, faith, okay, faith is really important. Like you can have everything that you, you want. And the truth is that like you can say, oh, oh, I wanna, I wanna be rich. Like I think I wanna be rich, but this fact that you believe that you actually are rich, like whatever that you see doesn't really matter. But it's just that confident knowing that you are already what you say you want to be, and then just thinking that I think that no matter what. Like no matter what is happening in the world, nothing like nothing, literally nothing that, you know, you're already, you like, that is more, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Like the material things don't define you. The things that you have do not define you. It's basically your, your faith that really matters. Your faith matters. Your faith matters. Your faith matters. Your faith is really what controls your life and controls your existence, controls whatever happens to you. And I can try to talk to you about faith, like from now to tomorrow. The fact is that if you don't get it, like you don't get it. And there are certain things that will impact your life and that will just happen to you simply because you don't get it. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because you don't get it. Um, so you need to really meditate on what faith is. Like one of my favorite verses, is Hebrews chapter one, verse, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, talking about what faith really means. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You hope for it, but it's the evidence of the things that, you know, you've not basically seen. It seems like very like hard, like the evidence of things that you don't see. If that's what faith is. It's the substance. It is real. It is real in your mind and it's real. It is real that you already are what you say you want to be. You already are that person. And so you just walk, align yourself in that. And that is really what faith is, okay? So we're going to go into Matthew chapter 24. This 
chapter is actually very, very important. I feel like it's very important, especially in a time like this, you know, for me, I believe that the end of the world is here. Um, I'm going through this very personal, um, you know, situation where like I have my own apartment, God has blessed me with my apartment. And that's a whole testimony that I, we would like to share. Um, but it's not going to be on this channel because I have some people that are not on my side that are watching my videos that are, you know, that I don't want really want to share some certain things, you know, to, you know, so it's going to be on another channel. Um, so yeah, unfortunately my testimonies will not be here. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I'm like at this point where like, I have my things in Toronto because I just, I told you guys I moved from Toronto to Montreal and like, you know, I'm like, oh my God, like I need to actually like, you know, save enough to actually like get my stuff from there and like here. And I've, I've been praying to God about it. God is actually moving to making steps to get me there. But I'm like, oh my God, like I want it to happen fast. Like I can't imagine like just me furnishing my place and stuff like that. Um, But then like, I just paused, like I wasn't like yesterday or day for yesterday. And I'm like, this is quite interesting. After reading Matthew chapter 24, it just got me thinking that we are God's possession. And this is really like, this is this place we are in, like is full of sin. This is basically the dwelling place of the enemy. He has sovereignty, like he, he has power here. And so he has a lot of like, you know, um, influence here. Do you know what I mean? And so it feels like as if like we're in like the tent of the enemy. And so like, Jesus is like all the way still on the right hand of the Lord, although like we, we, he's with us, right? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and it's like, this is really like, it's painting the Lord, like it's painting Jesus Christ, first of all. And that is why, it talk, like Jesus Christ, I talk about this, that Jesus Christ right now is going through long suffering, like is going through like, He's going through it, okay? Even though he's on the right hand of the Lord where we pleasure is, but the fact is that his heart is with us. And so, you know, and that's why I've talked about this again, that the things that we do does matter and it does affect Jesus Christ. And so we need to act in a way that will please him, but also soothe him. Um, and so, yeah, it just got me thinking that, well, my thing is all the way over there. And I feel like it's just material things, but I also feel that, you know, attachment to it, that I need to get my stuff away from that, that place. It's costing me, first of all, it's costing me money to put my things there. Um, I'm just thinking, how much is, is it costing the Lord to have us here? It's actually costing him. But when I went through this scripture, really, that really enlightened my mind to really, really have that personal connection with the Lord regarding my matter, my situation, and to what he also is dealing with you know is 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 what we're going to talk about right now i'm going to read the, the chapter and it says jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple and jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily i say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down and as he sat down uh, upon as he, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. And I think it's quite interesting because David actually, when we're talking about when he was leaving, when he was leaving, um, yeah, when he was leaving Jerusalem, you know, he went to the Mount Olives. I think it's Olivet. Is it Olivet? I'm going to put that information. Um, let me see if I can get that information here now. 17. There are many like patterns in the Bible that are quite interesting that, you know, I think it's verse 16. Anyways, we're going to move on. I might put that there somewhere, but anyways, he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when shall this thing be and what shall be the signs of thy coming at the end of the world? First of all, like this people were actually just, you know, the disciples were showing the Lord, like, okay, this fine building, it's very pretty and stuff like that. And it's like, do you know what? Those things are actually not going to last long. They're actually going to be destroyed. And it seems like quite depressing, but this is where the mind of the Lord is. He knows that the time is actually very near. And then they start asking questions like, you know, what, what's going to be the sign? Tell us when will this be? Um, 
And Jesus Christ had to let them know. He says, Jesus Christ answered and said unto them, unto them, take heed that no man deceives you, first of all. It's basically him responding to what they're asking. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, right? And, she, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All those things will come to pass, but the point is that the end is not yet, okay? You will hear rumors of wars, you know, but do not be troubled. It says, for nations shall rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdom, kingdom against kingdom, what kingdom? Kingdom of, of, of darkness against kingdom of light. We see that happening here. If you're not experiencing that that tug of war, um, you know, you be look, be introspective and look around you or, you know, you would you would ex you 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 are experiencing this in some way or the other. There's no way. Nations shall arise against nation. This is already is already happening, and there shall be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in in diverse places. But all these are the beginning of sorrow. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated for all nations for my name's sake. Okay, and it says, then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall eat one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold because, in, well, if people are actually acting crazy, right, they're doing evil things. Like, I feel like the one that's very popular right now and that is actually affecting me is stone pelting. So like, for example, your neighbor or your upstairs neighbor, right, might be pelting, throwing like stones, like, you know, on the floor just to annoy you. Okay. Um, that is like something that is very common in India, but stone pelting is like very common in Canada as well. But like, it's not often talked about because like, you know, who wants to talk about that? But neighbors actually do that to annoy uh, their neighbor. Uh, people actually do that to annoy their neighbors or um, I know that that is you know has happened to me like two different places now um but yeah that's the thing um and it says love of many shall wax cold if this is happening to you getting persecuted like a lot you know you the bible talks about if you get you know um uh persecuted in one place you know tell in that place and another place, and another place. You, you basically like to dem to demonize parce que uh, fait quelque chose contre toi like you know it's like it's very annoying like yeah so you probably like you're like having that resentment in your heart that like, why do I have to deal with this you know well again like if you're going through like really hard time like it's really important that you have faith have faith that you are living in that life that God has called you into like even David when before he actually did what he did like it was in the it was basically in the favor of the Lord but it didn't mean that it wasn't going to fight battles like there'll be external battles coming at you but the point is that it's for you to gain more ground right it's for you to be who you, what has called you to be like there needs to be a refining happening and so you need to be able to accept that those things happening to you it's part of your training and so yeah head up high chest out and you know breathe it's gonna be fine uh, and it says, and because iniquity shall abide, the love of many shall wax cold. This is when the, your love should be increased. And it says, uh, but he that shall endure unto the end, the, the same shall be saved. For this, it says, if you endure till the end. And then that's the point where, like, you say, well, if you give your life to Christ. This is Jesus Christ talking here. He said, if you give your, if you, if you endure to the very end, you will be saved. But the point is that, well, the Bible also talks about it, well, from different people saying that, well, you just need to confess the Lord to be your personal Lord and Savior, uh, and you're saved. But again, the people out there saying now, you know, once saved, always saved. It's never a thing. If you're saved, you will go through, you know, your journey as a pilgrim. You go to your, through your journey. Um, even when you watch the pilgrims progress, you see like this guy, you know, um, the the basically the lead actor in the animation there was a guy that was going to follow him with um into the journey um but like literally did not even reach like a quarter into the journey that and he quit um he went back into you know the city of oppression um and we is that person saved question no you need to finish the, the journey. You need to finish it and you need to overcome for you to be saved. And so if you're saved, 
right? If you sit, if you decide that, yes, you want to go on this exciting journey and you never really get to the finish line, are you exactly, you know, uh, you know, like you, you did not finish the race so you are not a graduate so wow you're not saved do you know what i mean you need to graduate and it says and the gospel and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for the witness unto all nations and then shall the end come so this is basically the point that for me personally like i have to actually save money and put like save an amount of money to actually get my stuff from like Toronto here and so I get that. I get like Jesus Christ here. Yeah. Like the fact that for that to happen, like the gospel has to reach like the very end of the world. Like it needs to reach everywhere for that to happen. And so this is why it's really important that we actually preach the word of the Lord. And I feel like for anyone that is like very ambitious and you're like, well, if you do something, like you create something and you're like, I want it to get more traction uh just know that it doesn't really matter like really what matters is like the message of the lord is being passed across to people um and people are actually strengthened to actually continue to do what the work of the lord right and so you might strengthen like two or three people but the point is that you strengthen them and you push them forth to actually propagate the word of the lord so that the end of the world will come uh, and so that that breakthrough moment for the lord can come so that it can activate itself and i know that the breakthrough moment is going to be a day of peril for a lot of people but that breakthrough moment has to come you know that it will come it has to come right but it will come at the right time we believe we have faith that it will come at the right time at the time when you know the gospel has been preached to the end to the whole world it will come at the time when you know the world is supposed to end. So we are not saying that we want it to come faster than it should because the Lord actually condemns this because the Lord says that we don't really know what we're asking for because this is a day of, of, of peril. It's a day of like, you know, tribulation. It's a day of, of, of it's a day of like, darkness, utter darkness and, and gnashing of tears and crying and wailing, you know? It's a day of pain and, and it's just, yeah, and suffering for people right even for the saints because even the bible talks about it how like even the day will be shortened for because of the saints right because of the amount of suffering and pain that they will go through it's a day of war and so we're not saying that we want it to happen faster or, or, or later than it's supposed to come on we're saying is that we want to do our job we want to do our job for that day to come, we want to do our job for that day to come. We understand that patience is necessary, even though we are the ones that have to suffer the burden, you know, of actually carrying it or, you know, carrying the thing until we eventually get there, until we carry the water, we carry the skin. When you're carrying a water on your head, you know, it's like you have to walk very gently. It's very heavy. You're carrying the water on your head. You know, you're carrying it, walking into the destination. And then when you get to the destination, you carry it and you put it down, right? So, even though, even though we need to be strong, the word of the Lord will strengthen us, but the, the, the end of the world will come when it's supposed to come, but the prerequisites has to be, you know, um, done before then. And there are a lot of people out there that are saying that, well, Christians are preaching the word of the Lord. They say the word of the Lord is coming soon. Um, many people have died because of this. Even like the new generations now are very much like very adamant. They, they don't really care about like religion. They condemn religion. They don't understand why certain battles, certain wars are happening. Things that are where that started happening before you don't even understand the plans of the Lord. You don't even understand the mind of the Lord. You don't even know the creator that created you. You see everything that's happening. You see the trees. You see the sky you see the ground that you walk on you don't understand that there was someone that actually created it you don't know that there is god the most high the abba father the king of kings the most superior god you, you don't understand that there is a god there that is powerful a god there that is a spirit it is you don't you don't you, it's a spirit do you understand what a spirit means that is the one that created you not the devil it's a counterfeit of who god is and there's nothing for we are above him in Christ Jesus. 
And so this is what is really happening. They're saying that, well, the, the end of the world is, it hasn't come. And so they mimic and they mock, which is something that they've been doing right from time. And we know what they do. They mock. That's what they know how to do because they don't understand. The, even Jeremiah had to say that these people don't have understanding. They don't have understanding because if you do have understanding, there are things that will make sense to you. Do you know what I mean? They don't, they don't have understanding. And sometimes when we, we, we actually are like, well, let, maybe this thing should happen like so that they can see. This is not about signs and wonders. The Lord has given us power for us to demonstrate signs and wonders for those people. A lot of people are getting healed from cancer. A lot of people are getting healed. You know, there was just a miracle from in Erica's channel about how this man was like, he had cancer of the leg. It was healed from that. Like the, the, the angels had to perform miracles on him. Spiritual things being manifested. Do you know what I mean? That is really signs and wonders. That's what we're talking about, signs and, signs and wonders. The end of the world is not for signs and wonders. This is an end to something that has been happening. This is an end to something, a conclusion to something. It is not for signs and wonder. This is not to prove to you that God exists. This is not to prove to you that God is the God of the world. This is not to prove to you nothing. Do you understand what I mean? It says that time when the, the, the word of the Lord has been preached to all nations, when you know that you understand the word, you understand that God is God, you understand, not even if you, you've you heard the word, the seed has been planted in you, even though you're having doubt, that's just the seed that's been planted in every each and every person, that you will not have a case against the Lord and say that, well, I did not know. There will be nothing like that. On the day of judgment, there will be nothing like that. You will not be able to say that you did not know. Nah. You heard it. You heard it somewhere. Somebody told you. You heard it somewhere. And so when you're, when you're about to be thrown into the lake of fire, you heard it somewhere. Somebody did tell you, and you can't lie. Somebody did tell you. You know what I mean? And it says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. We talked about this in the, in the book of Daniel, right? Spoken by of by Daniel the prophet. Stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. When the desolation or abomination of desolation happens, when Daniel talked about this. He says, then let him, there'll be, there'll be what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness. You know what that means? Lawlessness is going to affect you know, the people without power in the world is going to affect even people with power. Lawlessness is not where you want to be. Like, do you know what I mean? And the, and the culprit would be money. Money would be like what will literally uh, aggravate that lawlessness in, in, in the society. And it says, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountain. You can see, it said, let them which is on the house top come, um, not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let them, him which is in the field return back to take his cloth. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. If you're pregnant, if you have a, a little child, and this is like, it, and there's a lot of, Thoughts in people's mind that, well, I know that the Lord will not um, cause the end of the world to come if women are pregnant or like are still breastfeeding. The fact is that that day when the Lord has said it's going to happen, when that day, when the prerequisite has been met, what that day when the Lord has said that we know what the gospel of the Lord has been preached to all nations, then even though a woman just is just having a child, the fact is that the world, end of the world will come and my people are going to go through peril and that is it, okay? It says it's not going to be based on like, oh, the women still having children or, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to impregnate my wife because I don't want the end of the world to come now nah, even if she's pregnant even if she's about to have a child or even if she's already having a child on the way or the child the end of the child is right there if god has said all god needs to do is just to just say it that's it that's it you don't have a say you're not controlled you can't control the lord you cannot do that dear you cannot do that the israelites tried the israelites tried and the lord told them you cannot control me my dear you can't and it says, let me that let him, which is in the field, return back to take his clothes. He said, well, we've talked about that. He says, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day, for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not beginning um, since the beginning of the world to this time. No, not ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, right? There shall, there should no flesh be saved. You see, nobody. Nobody it says that day, the day will be shortened, but the fact is that no flesh will be saved. Every it's the end of the world. You know what the end of the world means? It's like everything in this world, nothing will be alive in this world anymore. Like everything is like 
everything is gone. Everything is like, there's not going to be life on this world. Everything is going to be destroyed. Like nothing, no, you know, when they're talking about the movie depiction of the end of the world, that they say that the people that are going to be like under bunkers, like the people that will be hiding somewhere that will still survive somewhere, somehow. The fact is that that is not going to happen. The end of the world will come and everybody will like be goners. They'll be gone, dead. It says for the elect sake, you know, for people that are born again, believers of the word, they said those, those days will be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ or there, believe it's not. Don't believe it. If they say they're Christ, they want to save you from something. They're trying to deceive you. They're going to be deceivers. It says, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it's where possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Like they would even deceive those ones that are saying that they're even born again. So you need to be, you know, in your, in the word of the Lord to know exactly, you know, what the Lord is saying, because this is probably very, very sleep. They will tell you that, oh, you know what? Um, yeah. There was this version of the Bible that's, you know, they, 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 they basically you know heat and now it's out now it's a new edition and now you need to read this one that the one that you're reading is like the one that is just for everybody but there's a special one for special people they will tell you rubbish and they will, they will let you they will like they'll try to mislead you they will flatter you in away from the way of righteousness from the narrow path you know that is the serpent that is the dragon speaking through them it says be i have told you i've told you before wherefore if they shall say unto you behold here is the desert go not forth do not go into the desert place the wilderness the, don't go into the desert place behold here is the, he is the secret chambers believe do not believe it when they tell you he said he is in the they, they tell you he's in this in the is in the desert do not go and they tell you that he's in the secret chambers do not go okay you know where your lord is you know your jesus he says for as the lightning cometh out of the east and the and the shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Light is so beautiful. It's going to be like lightning. And says, for wheresoever the carcass is, there will be what the eagle be gathered together. You know what the carcass is? You know what the eagle is? The eagles. The carcass will be the dead. There will be a lot of dead. Do you understand? It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and the sun will be dark. The moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and there then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn the mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the cloud you see when he says like you know that there will be uh this where wherever the carcass is those ones that are mourning those ones that are dead already because everyone is gonna die so as you're mourning just you're mourning because you know you're gonna die like you know you're gonna die it says the morning they see the, the son of man coming down from the cloud of heaven with power and great glory you have the opportunity you know to choose life over death he said yes and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet a sound a trumpet of war the sound to to showcase that war is about to happen there is war about to happen and so they shall gather together is elect from the four winds and from from one end of the heaven to the other. It says, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that the summer is nigh. So likewise, ye. You know, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till you all these things be fulfilled. Do you understand? Like all this, that's what Jesus Christ said. He said that this generation shall not pass. We see this. This thing is already happened. It's, it's, it's already, it's happened already. Like guys, it's happened already. These things, the, it's just the, it's just the, 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 the point where God would just say, fine, let's pull the rug. It says, everyone on earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And we know that for sure. It says, but of the Day and hour knoweth no man. Nobody knows. No, not the angels of the heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. You see, in those days, like you see, for as in those days, as in the day, as 
Fathers in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Okay, they were doing when they they heard, they knew that the, the day they you know they would they know we, God was going to do something. God is going to do something, and will let them know just like the way He did to the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah. He let them know, right? He let them know even in this time, but they didn't believe, and you know they kept doing what they were doing, you know, eating, drinking, doing all the sorts of things that they wanted to do. They didn't believe that the end of the world was coming. Coming, right they didn't even believe right this is until the day Noah entered into the ark and it says I knew not until until the flood came and took them all away the flood took them all away and so also the coming of the son of man will be we see and then it says then shall two be in the field and one shall be taken and the other left two women shall be grinding at the mill and one shall be taken and the other left watch therefore for ye know not what hour your lord doth come but know this, that if a good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know, so if you knew that the thief was going to come, like you could probably going to gear up and like, you know, get ready, be prepared. And that's what we're talking about, training, preparing in this time, preparing. You know, if, if human beings, if they know that an earthquake or a flood was going to happen, right, they will do emergency plans, they will do it and, and get ready. But when they hear about spiritual things, they are more likely to, you know, not to respond because they're spiritually dead. Verse 44 says, therefore, be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh, right? Who then is a faithful and why servant, whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season, right? It says, blessed is that servant, the one that will give them meat in due season, the one that's faithful and wise. It says, in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh. It says, blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when um, whom is Lord when he cometh shall find so doing like you're doing what you're supposed to do very i say unto you that he shall come he shall make him ruler over all his goods but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants right and to drink and to eat with the drunken the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder, you know, cut him asunder, a wicked servant, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of it. Hell is not something to play with, guys. And this is just to remind you of like what really mattered, and especially in this season, right? We've talked about what our lives look like and really what our lives really is about. It's about faith. If you do have faith, you will know that the Lord can come in any time and you'll know that. You know, this is something that can happen at any time. You would understand and, and prepare yourself every single day because you don't know. It might, it, it might, it might not be today, tomorrow. The fact is that we don't know. We don't know. But the fact is that we know what we're supposed to do in the season, which is to preach the word of the Lord, which is to live righteously, to bear fruit of the spirit. Right? And so this is what we ought to do. And you need to Always be introspective to be better. Increase your faith for more. Okay? And so that is what I wanted to share today I'm in our Bible study. And I know that the Lord has blessed you. Um, just know that the Lord is pained that you're here. And he wants to take you to a better place, right? He wants you to be with him. Um, and so feel... Let your, let, let your heart feel the Lord's pain. Let your heart feel it. Because when you do, you're able to understand, really. But the Lord loves everybody. Believers, non-believers, he loves everybody. He loves everyone. And he wants his desires that every single person on this earth, no matter how wicked and evil they are, he wants every single person to be saved. He loves every single person. That is the God that we serve. That is the one that created the heaven and the earth. He wants everyone to be saved. And it is only by faith that we can actually please him. It is only by faith that we can actually encounter him. Without faith, we can't do anything. We can't literally like have a relationship with God. And so you need to have faith with him. You need to have faith in him. In him. 
so that you can live. Okay. Anyways, I know that the Lord has blessed you. And so we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the lives of the sons of God tonight. I give you all the glory, Lord, in the name of Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, for those ones that are wanting to give their lives to Christ after hearing this word. I pray, Father, that you will bless them, O oh God. And I pray that you will manifest yourself in their lives, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. And if not, if you want, if you want to give your life to Christ today, you can just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I'm sorry for all of the pain that I've brought you this past years. And Lord, I want to know you. I want to experience you in my life. And I trust that you will do magnificent things in my life, oh Lord. I surrender my life unto you and I believe that you are my Lord and my personal savior. I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for this new life, this eternal life that you've given me. Thank you for your grace bestowed upon my life, oh Lord. And I pray for repentance for my ancestors from my generation until uh, the 24th generation. I pray that you will forgive and that and you purge, you purge this generation, oh God, in Jesus' name. And I introduce life into my life. And into my family, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. I pray that as I start this journey, that you will introduce me to the right people, to the right church, to the, to the right resources to grow my faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, for the lives of those ones that have just given their lives to Christ. So thank you, Father, for the ones that are watching this video to increase their faith, to grow in, your, in their faith, oh Lord. I pray, Father, that you will continue to bless us. You continue to, to increase us, oh Lord, and you continue to reveal yourself, oh Lord, unto us in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for no matter what persecution that we're going through now, that you will strengthen us, oh God, to even experience more of your grace, oh God. And I pray, Lord, oh God, that as we, the more persecutions that we experience, the more we will grow in our love for you, the more iniquity that is abounding in this world, the more righteousness we are, we are bound and the more fruits that we are bearing, the more love we have for you, oh God, in Jesus' name. And Father, we are not just hearers of your word, but we are doers of your word in Jesus' name. And no matter what the climate is, Father, you will, I pray that you will build and create a resistance and endurance in our lives, oh God, in our spiritual walk, in our spiritual lives of oh God that will push us and gravitate us oh God to continue to do exploits in the kingdom of the Lord to preach the word of the Lord and to do everything to bring about the vision and the manifestation of the vision of the Lord into 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 into, into reality in Jesus name but how we worship you oh God for we surrender everything oh God that we are everything that we are we surrender it all to you oh God in Jesus name because you are God you are powerful you are omnipotent you are our father you are the one that's able to do wonders in our lives oh God and you continue continue to we exalt you god because you take care of us you have proven yourself to be lord of our lives oh god you you are blessed us oh god and your promises of our lives continues to unfold oh lord and father we trust you that you you are you are just amazing we trust you dearly we trust you oh god you deserve it you have you have earned that trust oh god but i will give you all the glory oh god thank you father be thou exalted oh father in jesus name thank you father for your protection oh god and for your guidance in jesus Jesus mighty name I pray amen so guys I am gonna see you tomorrow um and I know that the Lord will bless you I'm really excited about tomorrow's um teaching because it's gonna be the Genesis series um this is gonna continue to build and encourage you to continue to work in your faith and to increase it because it's the only way to go <laughs> and so guys I love you I'll see you tomorrow ciao